The following interview was conducted with Laszlo Kovacs, formerly the he uh, librarian for the Humanities, Social Science, and Education Library, now the College of Liberal Arts, for the Purdue uh, and a University retiree for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, October 27, 2010, in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Professor Kovacs. Nice to have you. Thank, yeah, thank you. you. Okay, tell us a little about where you were and when you were born and your parents in early years. Well, I was born in Hungary uh, in a city that has a very long name. Uh, at any rate, it, it was the largest, eighth largest city in the country with a population of 65,000. Uh, primarily uh, agriculture and small industry uh, dominated the, uh, the local scene. Very uh, art-minded uh, and culturally uh, oriented city. It had its own uh, choir, orchestra, theater, galleries, and so forth. My uh, parents, my mother was a kindergarten teacher and my father was a businessman. Uh, two older sisters, uh, the older one was educated and became a pharmacist and the younger one uh, was a physical educator. The, uh, the name of the school uh, where I attended was uh, established in 1722, which preceded the birth of George Washington, just to give you a, a sense of the uh, direction. I studied literature, Latin, Russian, German, history, and economics. Among the teachers, uh, we had three PhDs in biology, literature, and history. Very uh, eminent teachers and, and wonderful uh, people, all of them. Uh, the graduates of the school, uh, men and women, uh, uh, attained high achievements in all walks of life. Uh, some of them were invited uh, to be members of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Others received honorary doctorates from universities from abroad. The uh, sport program was very active and successful. We had Olympians uh, in fencing, basketball, swimming, and uh, water polo. Uh, after graduation, I had I enrolled at the uh, Debrecen Theological Seminary in 1953 when I was uh, studying under outstanding uh, teachers and professors in languages, philosophy, theology, ar uh, archaeology, and church history. I received a Bachelor of Theology equivalent. I also uh, took voice lessons at the uh, uh, nearby conservatory. In 1956, uh, I uh, left the country uh, for Austria, where I lived in Hung uh, Austrian refugee camps and came to the States uh, without a word of English uh, at the end of 1957. I started working uh, at a car repair shop and uh, later on uh, I uh, was invited to, uh, uh, to the staff of the United Nations where I immediately enrolled in an English language program and uh, later on uh, also for English at Columbia University. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I went to study and continued, uh, completed my uh, studies in theology and received a Master of Divinity in 1964. Uh, that summer I moved to Indiana University, Bloomington, and um, uh, spent six years in graduate studies and graduate programs. Among others, I received a, an Emmy in Library Science an Emmy in History, a certificate in Hungarian Studies, which was an equivalent for, for another uh, master's, and enrolled in a PhD program in Uralic and Altaic Studies. Uh, I had considerable library experience during those six years. I was also invited to teach Hungarian language and history and uh, participate in a translating project. That is, uh, and also contrastive linguistics. In 1970, I was invited to Hungary by the Hungarian Academy of Sciences to uh, give lectures. And in the same year, I was uh, uh, named the head of the history department at the Cleveland Public Library, uh, which had a very unique 220,000 volume history collection, uh, which was as strong or possibly stronger than 
the history department at Yale University. I had a professional staff of 12 uh, and uh, a unique, unique collection of international scope. Mm -hmm. I was invited to uh, uh, write a descriptive bibliography, which is the, the most complex and difficult uh, form of bibliography on the Hungarian and Polish collections as part of a national survey that was initiated and coordinated by the Library of Congress, Russian and East European uh, Division. I accomplished that in six weeks, although I did not have, have a word of Polish uh, with a, the help of a graduate student from Case Western Reserve University. Uh, the job was accomplished in a record time of six weeks and received a, uh, a very strong endorsement from the Library of Congress. Mm -hmm. okay. Then at Purdue University, I uh, applied for a vacancy uh, during uh, the fall of 1973. Later on, my understanding was that there were 72 applicants for the position, including three internal candidates. The chairman of the search committee was Oliver Dunn. <coughs> and other than the search committee, I was also imbued, interviewed by the department heads as a whole with Lee, chair, uh, Lee uh, Trackman as chairman and uh, by Joseph Danyesi and uh, Bob Ringel. I received an appointment at Purdue uh, January 1, 1974 as an associate professor without tenure. The assignment was made, made very clear by the uh, director of libraries and Dean Ringel to reorganize the general library for the school of HSSC. <laughs> <laughs> transfer and in, uh, integrate departmental collections into the main library, transfer the 500s and 600s to subject libraries, uh, and within 18 months <clears throat> I received uh, tenure as associate professor. Okay. The, uh, the dean emphasized that I uh, would become part of the school's program. They invited me to teach within the Department of Communication, <clears throat> My primary assignment was uh, to maintain contact with department heads, attend school senate and departmental meetings. Uh, I was appointed as a full member of the school's curriculum committee. Um, I was to organize and chair the departmental library representatives meetings, which was a, a monthly exercise. Uh, visit each newly appointed faculty member and discuss their teaching and research needs and ask for a copy of their publication for collection uh, because when uh, promotion and tenure committees were searching for uh, their collection in the library, uh, this was the place to come, so it was to their benefit to have a copy of their collection right here. Uh, I was also asked to build up the library's professional staff with subject specialists, and all these people came in uh, either with a ready or a PhD in progress. Stuart Saunders came from uh, a PhD, Ohio State. He, <coughs> he completed the dissertation six months after he arrived. Mark Tucker, likewise, uh, he uh, finished his dis dissertation for Illinois, University of Illinois, uh, a year thereafter he came. Jim Bracken, Mary Ellen Collins, Christine Anderson, and Jean-Pierre Rubel uh, finished their PhD before they arrived here. I was also expected to participate in uh, ALA and other uh, national organizations. I was elected twice as chair of the Russian and East European section of the American Library Association. I received university support for personal research, publishing, to travel overseas, uh, that is to, to give papers and lectures, uh, I was involved in consultation, appraised 35 personal uh, libraries and entire library collections, uh, up to 220,000 volumes, for example, uh, for gift insurance and inheritance tax need. Uh, I also purchased a <coughs> 12,000 volume personal library collection in American literature. Could this, uh, <coughs> could <coughs> criticism and translations. 
and also a 3,000 volume collection on art and art history. He received special funds from uh, Director Denise, Dean Ringel, Provost Haas, and department heads. Drafted a collection development policy for the HSEC Library, proposed building up a collection on the history of ideas, applied and received a grant to purchase a collection on Canadian literature, history, and culture. I was elected into the University Senate for two terms and was named Librarian of the Year in 1984. Consolidated uh, departmental collections into the HSSC Library, including philosophy, political science, physical education for men, physical education for, for women, and communication. Negotiated gift collection with retired faculty, uh, and I was very touched when Margaret Church, when she unexpectedly died, I was in her will named as that the, the her personal library collection should be handled and managed by uh, Laszlo Kovac and uh, uh, integrated into uh, the HSSC library. I also worked with local uh, law firms, uh, both here and in Indianapolis. Uh, I uh, managed to uh, attract uh, subject collections from other universities, including uh, an IU collection on the sociology of labor, since we already had a sociology of health uh, and related uh, studies here. Also from IU, a collection on China uh, from a, a gentleman of real accomplishment. Also alumni collection, there was a tragic death of a uh, head of the uh, history department at Columbia University who was a, an alum alumnus of Purdue. Uh, he hailed from North Liberty and it was in his will that his collection should come to Purdue University. So I acquired that, uh, I transported uh, the collection myself from North Liberty uh, to West Lafayette. Uh, during my sabbaticals, uh, I surveyed the Hungarica collections in the United States and Canada. This has never been done before. As part of this, I visited 70 American ac academic public research libraries and special collections and archives, and also a goodly sum in Canada. This required uh, knowledge of subjects, a unique uh, systematic uh, research approach uh, and languages, and maintaining contact uh, with colleagues. I invested considerable personal funds and vacation time uh, into this program. I, have, I was appointed senior fellow at Indiana University and participate uh, uh, in PhD uh, committees. Uh, organized book exhibits at Cleveland Public Library, Purdue University, and Indiana University. Invited uh, to lecture in the United States, Canada, and Europe. Issued scores of publications in internationally recognized journals. In 1985, I was the keynote speaker of the Hungarian uh, National Library in Budapest. In the same year, I was promoted to the full rank. In, from 1990 to 1996, uh, I uh, accepted a position as library director and professor, and my primary assignment was to coordinate the major addition and reorganization of the main library with a budget of $22 million. In 1992, I was invited by People to People based on a nomination of uh, American Library Association colleagues to organize a visit to eight national and academic libraries in three countries, including Russia, the Ukraine, and Hungary. And this was the very first time that American academic librarians uh, visited these three countries sponsored by people to people. In 1993, I was invited to Cyprus to formulate a design of a new library and outline a collection development policy uh, for the uh, English language collection. Uh, at the college, uh, the new administration developed a retirement schedule for tenured faculty, similar to what is going on on the, on the campus here at Purdue now, and I took advantage of it. From 1996 to 1999, I served as pastor of a church in the Northwest Indiana community, but due to the diminishing membership, the church closed and I moved back to West Lafayette. I have been invited to evaluate English language collections 
at the four largest universities of Hungary. This has never been done before. And it took me four weeks to do that, one week at each institution. And I was their guest. And this project was uh, initiated by the Indiana University uh, Graduate School. I was invited as a lecturer to my hometown several times, including uh, just uh, eight weeks ago. Uh, in 2001, I was invited to teach English at a bilingual Hungarian English school in Hungary. Uh, I continued research, publishing, lecturing, invited to teach Hungarian language, history, and culture at a, a Hungarian heritage camp in Pennsylvania. Uh, I serve as visiting pastor in the greater Lafayette area as needed. In sports and recreation in 1952, I was member of the, uh, the gymnasium school's basketball team that achieved second place in the national competition. My sister Ella was a member of the United States synchronized swimming Olympic team at Rome in 1960. Again, that was a unique performance because uh, no one ever from Hungary uh, was a member of the uh, United States Olympic team uh, at that time or ever since. I visited uh, 46 states in the United States and four Canadian provinces, several countries in Europe, including just uh, this year, England, Denmark, Estonia, Russia, Finland, uh, Sweden, and Hungary. Uh, others in previous uh, years, the Ukraine, Austria, Germany, Netherlands, and Bermuda. Well, uh, just to summarize uh, the, uh, the library program here at Purdue, beginning with 1974, the former general library was slowly transferred into the intended HSSE library. The collection was centralized, except for psychology. A professional staff was appointed that was academically well qualified to assume collection development and to provide quality service to students and faculty. Public service improved to address the needs of the school of HSSC. The serious collection was weeded and reviewed periodically. The monographic collection was evaluated and built up with a careful uh, money-saving approach to the university. Uh, internal funds received and external grants were secured to address collection deficiencies. A gift acceptance policy attracted major donations in critical areas. Duplicates or not needed copies were offered to branch campus libraries and the Indiana University Library System. Large collections were purchased that addressed significant gaps in the collection, and collection development was coordinated with subject libraries on campus. The HSEC library contributed to the academic mission of the school and the university. The uh, dean's office, the department heads, and the teaching faculty provided support and cooperation in achieving these goals. The library administration provided uh, timely support in many ways. And the subject knowledge of the HSSC library faculty had a major role in all these developments. So this is the outline, Katie. And here is a right. selection of my bibliographies. Good. Uh, that includes primary publications, and I need to cor uh, make one correction here. Uh, wrote surveys of the Hungarian Polish collections in the Cleveland Public Library, and uh, that was uh, edited out of and initiated by uh, the Library of Congress. And then uh, um, there is a, uh, a translation there. And then uh, I worked with the Lille Library a number of times. I received stipend there to spend a week or so there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Hungarian collections in academic and research libraries in North America uh, after I, I started uh, visiting uh, libraries and archives and, uh, and special collections. Uh, the Ural uh, Altaisha Yarbuker was a uh, uh, well-established journal. Journal. It was already in the 51st year of of publication, so it was a an international recognized uh, mm -hmm. journal. Then, uh, uh, as I was visiting and giving lectures in Hungary, those were also 
given in Hungarian and published in Hungarian. And uh, uh, so that's the, uh, the first page. Then uh, continued the research. So these, these were uh, uh, segments and given out and published uh, as I was making my rounds in the country. Uh, and then, uh, for example, the, the fourth one, Dan, uh, uh, New Hungarica as gift uh, in the University of Chicago Library Special Collections. This was an outstanding collection, and they asked me uh, to go up there. I spent a week there uh, in the uh, special collections department and uh, uh, as their guest. And uh, So anyway, uh, then... Uh, Did you do appraisal for that? For those or just no, those those them? were those were already okay. They've uh, already been accepted. As gifts. Yes, okay. yes. Those, those somebody else appraised that, and then uh, here this is a major item: the, uh, the library er enrichment program for for university libraries in Hungary. This is the one that was sponsored by IU, mm -hmm. and then this the, the rise and demise of a unique library collection uh, was also published. Uh, I. Uh, let, let's say again, it's in, it's in English, but it's a, a horrifying example of how uh, collections uh, can be uh, mishandled. And uh, and uh, at any rate, I I was invited into that the tail end of it. Then uh, these are some secondary things. Uh, uh, short items, uh, and then. Uh, Page three papers, lectures and papers presented. This is this is just uh, some of the more important ones, and then uh, on page four, uh, uh, the lectures that I gave, consulting, uh, National Endowment for the Humanities Research Program. I was a, a panelist evaluator of research proposals in librarianship and bibliography, for example. That was a, an important one. And then the external consultant on establishing the first academic library uh, on the island of Cyprus. I mentioned it before. And then the, the people to mm -hmm. people. And then uh, appraiser of collections. I've done that since 71. Uh, it was from a few hundred to 8,000 items of rare books. And then also up to uh, 250,000 volumes uh, of entire library collections that included everything all formats. Can I ask you this particular one, the negotiated purchase of this 12,000 volume scholarly collection, what was that one? Was that the one they... It was the Hayford collection from, uh, from, uh, uh, he taught at um, Northwestern University. Okay. Hayford? Okay. Hayford. Okay. Hayford, yeah. And the, uh, the art library was owned by his wife. So, <laughs> everything that was in the they were ready to retire, and uh, we very cleverly arranged both the funding internally here and the, the, uh, the, the payment, forwarding the payment for that on a five-year basis because that uh, helped us and also helped them in terms of income. So they didn't have to pay uh, the income tax on the, the total sum, yeah. but only one-fifth uh, of the total each year. So anyway, that was... A, uh, a very, very Good cleverly uh, right. arranged. Okay, and then uh, the uh, the last one. Those are the lists of libraries and archives that I have visited. So that's that's quite a list. I have a, a couple comments that I'd like to uh, add, just a little more detail. When you're doing, are you still doing appraising? Oh yes. Well, when I'm thinking of researchers, when you appraise things, you have to have special training for that. Is that or how does that come about? Well, in because you've done so much of it. I in librarianship, uh, uh, you know that 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 comes with the territory. You you learn this uh, at, at at IU, for example. I, mean, uh -huh. I spent six years there, and I I was involved in the library, so uh, I helped them. I was able to do that because I was not a full time uh, staff member. Uh, and then certainly at the Cleveland Public Library, my goodness, people were uh, donating things uh, very nicely. And what I did at that time, I wrote the appraisal and another colleague who was not 
part of the library system signed it for me. Uh, but you know, it was total, totally legitimate. Uh, but sure. you know, some of these came fifty, sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, right. And then for uh, uh, IU later on, uh, a uh, uh, retired uh, Hungarian uh, diplomat uh, from Washington, the IU asked me to appraise the collection. I was already here, so I have done that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so. Uh, what you need to know uh, in this case is the IRS regulations because those change uh, for what is called gift in kind. And uh, it has to go through all kind of labyrinths um, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty complicated but it has to go through the library administration uh, and then to the, uh, uh, the development office and then it has to certify that indeed the, the items have been transferred, received, and and become part of the university property. And then they certify the uh, the appraiser's statement uh, that indeed it was $125,000 or whatever. And uh, sometimes the donors attach some conditions to that which I try to... Uh, uh, discourage some of them specified uh, certain things again I, I try to talk them out of that uh, but anyway some of those could be pretty pretty involved and uh, and the uh, what is surprising is many times the donors don't really know what they have right. uh, because they receive money or, or, or books from right and left and uh, Okay. Some of them, uh, they are forgotten, and the collections, conditions are. Uh, oh, I was I was here uh, in West Lafayette in a a professor's basement, and it was absolutely embarrassing. Now I could not appraise that uh, for the university, but I, I suggested a, uh, a a way to you know get around IRS uh, regulations, but you know somewhere. And you know, we, we were able to add maybe 20 or 25 percent of it because of the physical condition. They, they, they were mildewed and they were oh. full of, full of uh, bugs and all that. So uh, right. anyway, but uh, oh yeah, I, I do that. It's, uh, are you still doing some of that? Sure, sure. Okay. What uh, other things are you doing in your retirement? Well, are you as you see, traveling and doing all of this. Well, I, I do some. Uh, How about the international center? You still help out there, don't you? Well. Uh, I used to uh, be on the board of directors oh, there, okay. and uh, they invite me every year to prepare a meal, but uh, I haven't done it the last two years because it's just physically too tired. Yeah, it's right. a, it takes a lot of takes a lot out. Yeah, of it. it takes a week to prepare and two three weeks to clean up, and so anyway, uh, and uh, so uh, I have not not done that. Uh, that uh, Librarian of the Year award, that's very nice. Congratulations. I'm glad you put the awards and things in here. This is very nicely done. Yeah. You really covered so, a lot. So, anyway, oh yes, well, it's uh, uh, <laughs> and interesting enough, uh, I still remember that it came with a, uh, a $500 uh, <laughs> cash. Honorarium uh, or something. Yes, or and that came through the, the uh, the Purdue Research Foundation or whatever, but uh, sure. uh, at any rate, um, uh, and I was on my way on a sabbatical, so I used that money to finance my <laughs> my research. But I'll tell you, I want to mention something here. Okay, please do. That was, uh, to me, was a surprise and, and unique. When I was promoted full professor, no, uh -huh. when I, excuse me, when I received tenured as an associate professor in 76, uh -huh. uh, the, uh, uh, when I received the paper, of course, you know, I went to visit uh, uh, Director Denise and thank him for the support and also to uh, Dean Ringo. And uh, he said, uh, uh, well, you know, of course, the, the school was ready to uh, support you, and I know that uh, letters came from several sure. department heads. Um, and he said, now I'm going to ask you a question, and I want to have a straight answer. 
but you may not like to uh, like what I asked him. I said, what is your salary? And I told him, and he said, well, he was prepared to improve on that because he said, I should, I should have a better salary, and he transferred re uh, uh, recurringly permanently a sum of his own money to the libraries uh, to add to my salary. Yeah. Very and it, nice. was, it was a re recurring commitment. Uh, so, uh, and I, I was very, I didn't know that until the, right. uh, the, uh, the salary announcements came out some, some weeks later. And, yeah, that's very and nice. He, he wrote a letter to uh, uh, Joe Danese and uh, I, I thanked him personally and also uh, with a uh, with a with a letter so uh, yes and when when uh, our older son then is graduated both your children graduated from Purdue didn't they Purdue yeah okay uh, he he was already uh, a provost uh, at the time when Dennis received his degree and he, I asked Bob to give him uh, hand him his diploma and he did from the stage he did? From the stage. Wonderful. The stage. And after the stage, he invited us, the whole family, into his office in Hobby Hall and, and, and put a, a rope on me. And uh, we were holding the uh, uh, Dennis's diploma, the two of us, as if I had also participated in giving it to him. Well, you know, I was on the faculty. and uh, So anyway, uh, this was a kind of relationship that I had with him. And, and, you know, departments invited me to their social gatherings. So, you know, we, we, we had a good understanding right. and, and you under because and you I spoke their language in terms of uh, uh, the, uh, the subjects. And, uh, you know, when something was needed from, uh, from Russia for, for the Brzezinskis, they came to me, I arranged it, and it was here in six weeks. Uh, and you, had, you also, your own staff too, you, you did a lot of things. Too, oh, the, so yeah. Right. Those, uh, right. really, it, it was just, just absolutely, but I'll tell you, it took years and years to convince this administration here the benefits of that. And, and ultimately we saved a lot of money because these, these so-called library representatives, now some of them were really very good, very conscientious, but some of them had no idea how to save money what was the real need? They were just fa providing favoritism to f faculty members within the department, and uh, yeah. got that all scored away. Yes, and then at the same time, you know, they they were uh, the uh, uh, is complaining about the uh, the uh, uh, the lack of the collections and all that. Sure. And what is interesting about this? And I want the, uh, uh, to I get this on on sure. the uh, okay. So that many of these people, these 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 stalwart uh, faculty members, and, and and you know heads up, so many of, uh, of them were absolutely first rate, straightforward and honest. But there there was a, a a group of them who could have not been satisfied at any institution or any walks of life. Well, there are people like that. Uh, but the thing is that you know they they were they were, they had these phrases that you know when push come to shove and all that kind of and then we'll see at the end they had these 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 completely empty phrases and now these very same people as humble and as fragile and finally human beings when I see them in stores and and retirement centers and so forth, they are just as decrepit as I am. <laughs> so, you know, all these kind of, this, this is a, just a big front. And I'll tell you, some of them would have never made it out in the real world. The university was sheltering them. The university uh, tenured them because they were here for too long, for eight, ten years, when the tenure system uh, came in. And uh, some of them never published a blessed thing. But at any rate, they, uh, uh, I, I made this observation. So, you know, well, let's put this kind of a pompousness aside. Sure. Oh, there's yeah. no reason for it. Is that. there anything that, uh, that I forgot to ask, or do you think we pretty, pretty well covered, or something I oh, forgot? Oh, I, I brought you a few things, okay. Katie, just to show you. Okay. Uh, do you want me to put this on the tape? No. Okay. No. Well, then we'll, we'll end it. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Palasso, very much. I appreciate that.